Hello, my name is Aaron Otto, the International President of the Delta Chi Fraternity. And today is International Badge Day. And every day, I hope that you have the opportunity to stop and think about what the wearing a badge for Delta Chi means, the values that you support, the oath you took during initiation. I'd like to take a minute just to share with you a few of the, my favorite badges I've been able to collect over the last few years. Some of these are official badges of Delta Chi that are currently used to recognize positions or volunteer opportunities. And some are some of our history pieces. Let's take a look. Probably the oldest badge that I have in my collection is one that dates back to the University of Cornell, our founding chapter. Started in 1890, of course. This badge, based on its date, on the, uh, the name on the back of the badge, appears to date to about the 1896 era. If you'll notice it, it has incredible chasing, pearls, and is very uniquely made. Clearly, it's a one-off with a C-class back. That kind of moved us, and of course, if we're starting from the beginning in chronological order, we should take a quick look at our Founders Badge. Replicated in 1990 for our 100th anniversary, the Centennial Badge, or Founders Badge, which is available at the Delta Chi website, is a very simplistic badge with a solid gold delta with a diamond center with small rubies in the four corners of the Chi legs. Continuing on looking at some of the older Delta Chi badges, we have early on Delta Chi badges that were clearly made by individual jewelers. Some are incredibly small, where the Delta is a lot smaller than the Chi. Others, you can originally the Delta Chi badge, the active member pin, were all made of gold with a black enamel. And so if you find one of those and you'll find a number on the back, that might be a pin number. It's not the member's actual number within headquarters, but it does have some, sometimes some correlation to the age that they were active in the fraternity. But they, oftentimes, if you're very fortunate, you can find the history of a badge by having a name or a chapter or initials on the back, and that makes quite a story. Some chapters would use a chain guard with a letter on it that would, have, that would stand for the university, like the W for Wisconsin or the W for Washington, for example, or C for Cornell. Today, we've taken that plain and normal active pin and made an A's badge, which is an oversized badge representing their enlarged commitment to the Delta Chi fraternity. If you're a Chapter A or have been a past Chapter A, we invite you to purchase this badge in honor of your service to the fraternity. It, too, is available at the Delta Chi website. Keeping with that tradition, recently we wanted to recognize Alumni Board of Trustees presidents, and we took the A's pin, which is an active pin, a little bit oversized, and we put a diamond in the center to represent their commitment, their direction, and the support of our undergraduate chapters as one of the key alumni advisors. Let's see what else we have in here today. Then, in the early times, there were a number of jeweled badges. The oldest badge that we know of at headquarters in terms of its date from where it came from is called the Minnesota 1893 pin. And if you stop to take a look at it, it's incredibly sharp. It's got a pearl delta with a Tiffany diamond setting center. It's got red rubies in the uh, chi legs, and there's really crowed feet. So this is probably the best representation that we have uh, that demonstrates what early badges may look like that were jeweled. Again, Minnesota's chapter started in 1892, not long, about 16, 18 months after the Cornell chapter did. So it's great to have such an older uh, example of what a badge may look like. This too is available on the fraternity's website for purchase. You look at some other jeweled badges and it's pretty amazing how they haven't changed over time. This one is a, about 100 years old based on rough calculation of the name on the back of it. And it's amazing that it's a beautiful pearl with ruby sides and a beautiful diamond center. And what's wild is that you can find badges that are made in the 50s that look absolutely and completely just like at the same standard use. Another early pattern that was very popular would be a diamond center and pearl exterior with a uh, gold badge background. Of course, if we move on, and there was some badges that are no longer used. We have a Chi Delphia pin, which was for the Little Sisters organization. Uh, that is no longer used and as they were disbanded in 1990, but there's still a few of them uh, loitering around in terms of uh, those badges. We kind of continue to look at our evolution of the associate member pin. We started out with a red, very simple triangle with a light gold border. That modernized a little bit into a more solid gold border. And I've heard a few questions about how this plays out in terms of this next pin. 
When you look at this ACT AM pen, it's got a red and buff coloring with a chi in the center and the delta in the exterior, but it is not what you typically are used to seeing as an associate member pen. I've heard that this was used before the current associate member pen, and I've heard this is what was used at colonies during the 60s and 70s. And that would move us into the modern associate member pen with the white top above the chi inside the delta, the red on the left and right side, and the black at the bottom of the chi. There's also quite a collection of little sweetheart pens. They'd be some smaller badges that have some unique and different characteristics. You can still buy sweetheart badges as well, um, either a simple badge that looks like the active member pen, or one that has diamonds, or, or, sorry, ruby center and pearls on the exterior itself. Another badge we've recently started in recognition of other alumni commitment is what we call the BB's badge. It's a size of an ABT president or A's badge, and it's a reverse of the active member pin, instead having a gold delta and black chi in the background. There are a number, again, of one-off kind of uniquenesses. Let's pick on a couple of those. You've got this little stubby one that looks like it might have been individually tailor-made. That's a green emerald with very large pearls on the chi legs. It's a little bit smaller, but not as small as, an, as a sweetheart badge. You've got cases where you have white gold and it still makes a very sharp contrast to some others uh, that may be uh, gold, yellow gold color. We have pins today available on the Delta Chi website that are classy and unique with this black delta with, in this case, cubic zirconi corners and the center delta of the delta being a CZ center. Those are available on the Delta Chi website for sale. And one more that's available on the website for sale now is a 25 year recognition pin. It's the size of an A's pin and has a uh, number of diamonds in the center of it that you can purchase to kind of commemorate your 25 years of membership in the fraternity. As you kind of continue your membership journey, you're welcome to go through the alumni rededication ceremony. That is a solid uh, red triangle with the coat of arms in the center. Uh, others that kind of exist even beyond uh, badges would include the 1890 lapel pin for those who joined the Delta Chi Educational Foundation 1890 Society. You can find also uh, staff have created a badge to recognize their service. It would be a red ruby delta with blue sapphires in the chi legs, kind of modeling after the Minnesota 1893 badge design. Each of the international officers also has a badge. This is the DD's badge, which belonged to, belonged to Joe Lasha, who is a Michigan State alum. And it's a sequence of diamonds on the delta with fire opals on the offsets. It's a gold badge with beautiful chasing. The AA's badge is also very special. We'll pause for that one for a moment because that is the only badge that we know belonged to a previous founding father. We were very grateful in 2002 when the great niece of Peter Shermerhorn Johnson contacted headquarters to find out if we were interested in owning a badge that he had later in life. And of course we were, and as it turned out, she lived just a few short miles away from the 2002 convention site, which was uh, going to be hosted just a few short months after she made that phone call. She returned that badge to us at that convention and it was a wonderful reunion back to the fraternity and that was turned into the AA's badge. That is a beautiful, very simple gold badge, satin finish, that has diamonds on the delta and a kind of emerald green center stone in a Tiffany setting. But to know that it's a, uh, modeled after what we know Founder Johnson would wear on Founder's Day because it was even referenced in Tulsa News articles where he lived later in life and was later buried, it's just a very special honor and treat for past AAs and the current AA. Sometimes you can make, again, we have the ability to make a badge if you'd like to swap out some of the stones in it to match maybe a university color. We have a setting that that will work for. So I made one that has uh, amethyst in it for Kansas State Purple. And the list could go on and on. One other one I do want to show um, is the NIC pin. This is a lapel pin for the North American Infraternal Conference. That's our trade association that we're very proud to be part of as a, as a large fraternity in North America. The list could go on and on. I will highlight just a couple others and maybe we'll do another installment of this in the future. And that is this, this very little sim simplistic one, which I affectionately call Goldilocks. It is a very simplistic, almost looks like template gold that's clearly from a company stamped on the back called Quail. Quail uh, went out of business in 1916, so you can tell this was a very thin, very early prototype of a Delta Chi uh, all gold colored badge. Again, as I mentioned, you can have badges. This is a white gold with emeralds in the corner. 
But again, that emerald and white gold contrast is very sharp. One of the lapel pin is the Delta Chi Minute War pin, which is the battle axe and the scimitar crossed. These are available by contacting headquarters if you have alumni that are, have served in the military in a combat zone. We have a, quite a collection of keys, and I won't go through all those today, but just show you a sample. This is an example of what's called the Regent's Key. Keys used to literally hang on chains off your pocket watch, and you'd use the stem of the key to wind your pocket watch. And so in this case, you've got a Delta Chi badge spiked with the, the uh, stem through it, which we'd previously be used for winding your Delta Chi watch. A couple others that I will highlight, just a few more. One is this lapel pin that was from the 1908 Syracuse Convention, of which there are about only 45 to 50 people at. So a real treat to find this was their convention gift that would have been worn in a lapel. And one other lapel I want to point out, and it's truly one of my favorites, and this is a Delta Chi badge on a lapel stick. It's a one-sided, but it has the most vibrant fire opals I've ever seen, which if you just manipulate in the sunlight a little bit, will go from a red flare to a light blue to a dark blue to a light green, cloudy gray. It's just amazing. It's hard to find stones like this today uh, in this era. One last one that I'll point out that's kind of unique is that when we started colonies long ago, and we're talking in the 1890s, 1900, 19 teens, we used to have Chi Delta colonies, and each one of them would make their own badge. So if you ever find a Chi clearly over the Delta, you may have something very, very special to say the least uh, that uh, has a part in our history of our fraternity where every one of those groups had its own. So needs to say there's a number of different badges that we can all be very proud of displaying and wearing. Um, I'm very grateful for my collection. Every time I see one of these badges, again, it reminds me of the commitment we've made to Delta Chi, the commitment to be involved, a lifelong involvement, to connect with our fraternity brothers and stay connected in the brotherhood of a lifetime, but also to find a way to give back, be it volunteering for a chapter, being on an ABT housing corps, or just being a mentor to somebody on a professional development level where you could help somebody get an idea for an internship or connections for when it comes to possible employment in the future. So I hope as you're celebrating and thinking about National Badge Day here, that you'll take a moment to really kind of appreciate all that you've gotten from Delta Chi, what you've given back to it, and kind of ask yourself the question, what have I done for Delta Chi today? And I hope we have a chance to connect with you soon. Thank you for this interest and hope you have a great day.